refurbishing a vintage model steamboat, and this is part 25, piping the gas and water systems, plus a small amount of painting. That's just for the enthusiasts. I really don't like doing this job. These kind of jobs drive me nuts. My hands are far too big to play about with things in such confined spaces. What I have to do is run a pipe from the gas canister to a small valve in the stern, and then from that to the burner, which is in the bow. And here's the valve. And the piping of this small gas valve is no mean feat, really. I don't have a lot of clearance. I'm using 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe, which is a bit stronger than eighth, but it must not protrude above deck level, and I'm checking this with a ruler, and also it must not foul the servo, which will be controlling the rudder. The pipe at the other end, the one nearest the gas canister, has a coil in it, and the reason for this is just to give the pipe a bit of extra flexibility. When everything is finally piped up and secure, and the gas valve opened, there is no noise. And this is what I expected, because it goes to the emergency gas valve, and when I open this you can clearly hear a loud hissing noise. It's not a good idea really to fill the bottom of the boat with gas, and at this point I would just like to say... It's painting time! In the last episode, I showed how I was grinding away the excess milliput, and now it's time to paint it. But what I would like to say while you're watching this interlude of painting, that it is extremely important never to open the gas valve and let gas go into the inside of the boat. If you do, it will just lay there waiting for an ignition source, and when it gets one, all the superstructure parts will blow off. Now I've done this on an open launch, I blew the radio hatch off, just by letting gas get into the bottom of the boat. Because this gas is heavier than air, it finds its way into the lowest point of the boat, just waiting for an ignition source. And it's a good idea, in my opinion, if you're using an enclosed boat like this one, to buy one of these little battery-operated fans and blow the gas away in case you've let some go into the bottom of the boat. As a general rule, before opening the gas valve at all, make sure that you have an ignition source in front of the gas burner. That way the first gas that comes out of the burner nozzle will be lit immediately and this removes all risk of an explosion. At the moment, I'm painting the side of the boat using some Humbrol enamel, but it's satin, not gloss. Because the boat is quite old, it would look very wrong if it was suddenly having panels that were very bright. Because over the years, the panels have dulled down a little bit, I get a better match by using satin, but at the moment it's very wet, and so it looks very shiny. I'm also using, you will notice, a small LED torch because it's nearly impossible to see where I'm painting. Here's a shot of the side of the boat, and as you can see the colour is quite a good match. It just needs to dry a little bit more, and it will be a very good match with the existing paint. And now, at last, the final piping job. I have to cut to length, shape and silver solder a couple of lengths of copper piping. One to the hand pump, and one from the hand pump to the boiler clack. And I thought the last bit of piping was fiddly, it's nothing on this. One of the pipes needed a special fit in making, this is it. With a right angle connector so the pipe can feed up to the clack, because this is 3 16 pipe from the pump, but it goes down to 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe to the actual clack. I've just had a thought and I'd better explain. The term clack means check valve or one way valve that only lets water into the boiler and not out. Does it work? I put a funnel on the end of some silicone rubber tubing, which in turn fits onto the inlet pipe to the pump, and I move the pump arm, and well, the water's going down, so I think it's working. Yes, the water's going down quite well. Flush with success, and knowing that this is the end of the piping extravaganza, I'll do it again. Pour some water into the funnel, move the pump arm back and forth, and the funnel's water disappears as it goes into the boiler. There are no leaks, which is always a good thing, and no block pipes, which is even better. It's very easy when silver soldering to block up the pipe with silver solder, and I've done this many times, especially on the very small capillary tubing that you would use for such things as a pressure gauge. And more so, on water gauge blowdown valve extensions, this pipe is usually very fine. I'll just speed up this last piece of video, so you can clearly see the water disappearing down into the hole in the bottom of the funnel. On screen at the moment is a special spanner I had to modify to allow me to tighten one of the union nuts on the front of the pump 
And there's no way out of this really. The piping cannot go in with the pump. It has to be put on separately. What is this contraption I hear you say with the piece of wood on it? This is the drain pipe from the condenser. The piece of wood allows it to be mounted in the bottom of the boat because it has to support a valve, which in turn connects to this pipe and that allows attachment of another piece of silicone rubber tubing to allow the exhaust condensate to be removed from the boat and taken away in a suitable receptacle for disposal. I'm nearly at the end of this series now. There are still a couple of episodes to come fitting the radio control system and testing everything. There will be one extra video at the end and this will be a video of the boat in steam sailing on a lake. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.